my only concern is, um, and I would agree with my colleagues on the commission, um, you know, and I've brought it up several times before, is our goal since I've been on this county commission is not to just produce public housing and put it all in one place. We need to have a balance. And the only concern, though, I have is there was 210 points available, and all of these that are chosen um, even go to half the number of points. So I'm a little, and they don't, we didn't get scoring sheets, so I don't know why, for instance, um, the Whispering Pines only got 98 points out of 210, but then you still think that this should move forward with approval? Yeah, a couple of things there. Um, that 210 total points available is probably not attainable. And so in other words, there's no perfect project because to score well in one category, you probably wouldn't score well in another. So 210 is the maximum number of available points. So when we look at the scoring, we go through that process to establish the score. Mm -hmm. We bring the projects forward to you with that score, and the ones that we're recommending for approval today are those that also pass the readiness test. Okay. And so you'll see, you know, six other projects here that, you know, we're not necessarily saying no to these projects, but they haven't provided enough information to commit other funding sources, or if there's an entitlement issue, or some of those concerns, then you know we're going to continue working with them. In fact, of these ten round three projects, six of those have applied in either round one or round two. So I think what that kind of demonstrates is you know the readiness test. These you know some of these have applied in the past, but they haven't firmed up a primary funding source. They haven't worked through the entitlements. So we're continuing to work with them until the point where they're ready to proceed, and that's when we're bringing those to you with a recommendation um, for the conditional commitment. So. Um, you know, those raw numbers, that 130, that 135, those are pretty high scores in this round and previous rounds. Okay. But yeah, when you look at it compared to 210, thinking you could get 210, <laughs> it's not. I think our top score to date is 160. 160, okay. Thank you, Bruce. Sure. Commissioner George. Okay, a couple of random questions. So the, the 69 on Central, 6090 on Central, it says we're, we're gonna use the penny for money for construction costs. So how, how do we do that? I mean. I thought we could only use the penny funds for land acquisition unless it was part of a larger, is it because there's workforce housing in there? Yeah, when, when there is that nexus with the workforce housing, and I know I saw it mentioned in some of the write-ups on some of these projects, that does um, open us up to use money for the capital projects. So most of you are right. gonna see it be like infrastructure supporting the main project. Okay, so is that what it is? Infrastructure? Correct, it would go for infrastructure or hard costs for construction. We provide those funds as a, essentially a grant, but it's secured with loan documents so that that can enforce the affordability requirements for the 20 year period. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, the other question is unrelated to anything here. Have we, I saw that we previously got a request from Pinellas County Housing Authority for Rainbow Village. Have we, are, are you still working on that one? We are still working and on they're that still one. Waiting um, for funding. Yeah, they're going to apply this fall for tax credit financing, and so that's actually Grand Oaks has listed on the round three applications oh, okay. now. So they've got a, a four-phase redevelopment plan, uh, all with the name Oaks in each phase, and um, so they are trying to secure tax credit financing. And as I spoke to readiness earlier, should they secure that, then I think we'd move forward with a, a recommendation on that one. Great. Okay. Grand Oaks. Um. Back to the scoring uh, that you had on here as well. I'm just trying to, again, get inside um, uh, this. It may be scary, but I want to get inside your all's minds a little bit here, just so that we understand better kind of how you're pulling these together. When you get scoring, and again, I know you're not going to get 210, right? So, but if you get, like, one of these was in the 130s or 120s or one's 98, uh, have you gone through that? And I, maybe I've forgotten, uh, gone through that with us and how, you're, how, how you assess points and scoring, and is that what you're using to cut off available uh, projects that you're recommending versus ones you're not recommending in the round of applicants that you have at that time? Are you um, the scoring criteria was developed following the board's approval of the guidelines. So right. the board adopted those guidelines and staff developed a scoring system that would prioritize and award points based on those guidelines. Criteria like the size of the development, income set-asides, mixed income, okay. location, in those categories. Um, we have done a presentation on at the workshop in some of those categories. What we haven't done though is set a, a minimum score we basically said, you know, let's evaluate the projects based on the guidelines. Once a project is scored, passes the readiness to proceed test, we would bring that to the, to the board for consideration. So we've kind of talked about the idea of setting a, a lower threshold, but there's always that one off or that what if. It could be a small project serving a special needs community and a okay. CRA area that didn't necessarily score very well, but might, might be considered for funding. And the other thing along those lines, some, you know, when we look at projects, if there's a better funding source, the SHIP program or home funds, for example, we might recommend using those dollars rather than penny for. Okay. 
Okay, maybe maybe you could send us that refresher on the criteria you're using to come up with the scoring. Certainly. That would be great. Thank you. Mr. Gerard. Hey, wait, could, could we get that score, that spreadsheet about how that plays out when you're looking at the projects? I mean, at, when we get a group, could you bring us the scoring? Certainly. Yeah, we can provide that. As well? Yeah, it has each category and the points per category. And yeah, just so we can see how that works. And as far as for the developers and the applicants, that is posted on the website where the application is. So there's oh, okay. a narrative describing the scoring. And so that yeah. prior to applying, they can kind of go through and analyze their project to see how well they're meeting the criteria. But then they also get the scoring itself. Correct. After. Okay. But we, we don't. So we'd like to get it. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Long. Well, it seems to me, and I could be wrong, but a few years ago, we used to get that information when we were getting, you know, paper documents somewhere along the line, uh, we stopped getting that information. And I don't know if it's because staff felt we were dabbling too much in the weeds with regards to the scoring. I don't know. <laughs> but I do know, I do remember seeing those individual scoring, scoring that you all did. I don't, I don't think I made that up, did I? Karen knows. Well, I think you're everything. thinking more of the scoring that we would see when an RFP went out. Oh, maybe. And we would get the copy of those scores. Um, this new affordable housing is more of a new process. But, oh, but okay. I don't think we've seen those scores. And and. But you can provide that. I think we should see those. Yeah, yeah. I, I stand corrected. Yeah. You're right. But it was Thank on you. all different things that we had out to bid. It, yeah. Yeah. And I just think it helps us understand a little bit better <laughs> how you're arriving at the projects that you're recommending. And so that we're just all collectively a little clearer, and then our residents might, some of the ones that are questioning things might, might be cleared up, and maybe not, but because you're certainly recommending that one project that they're wanting us to not approve uh, for a lot of reasons that are listed right here. So we may not get to all of those or those questions, but at least some of them, I think would, it would be helpful. Okay. Good. Okay. Um, yes. Sorry, Mr. Justice. Sorry. But I think what is what's the current AMI? The current AMI for a household of four is $72,700. Of what? So also the, that's the total for four and then- That's so a four person eight, household so at the median income be, So for a four person household at 80% AMI, that number is $59,040 a year. 120% AMI for a family of four would be 88,560. Yeah, and as we're talking about not wanting to build these, you know, 500 unit complexes. Um, and I think what we haven't really talked about is trying to diversify the geography a little bit on the projects so they are spread out to where folks have access to transportation, access to their jobs, those kind of things. And the reality that we'll have to spend more money for some of those land costs in certain areas, just as if you're going to buy a single unit for, for buying a larger unit. And uh, and we're seeing that in some of the projects we're looking at today. And and it is it is a hard, Number And I, again, I think part of it also is just how we talk about it. Again, when we spread it across all the units, including the units that are not necessarily affordable, not necessarily market, but at the 120, um, I think the public can see that as we're subsidizing these units that are not, you know, needed to be subsidized, as opposed to just looking at what we are subsidized, that they are the ones that are in the categories, and just swallowing the fact that that's going to be at a higher number than the other one. And it's still the same dollar amount, but how we talk about it is a little different. I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody else, but thank you. Any, any other questions? Okay. So do, um, no, no other questions, do I have a motion? Okay, the motion by Commissioner Flowers, second by Peters. Peters, thank you. All in favor say aye. Mr. Chair, uh, I do have one individual who pre-registered to speak online on this item. Oh, okay. I'm so sorry. I didn't see that, so apologize. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I have a Mr. Jack Humberg. Mr. Humberg, if you could raise your hand in the Zoom application or press star nine to speak on this item. And once you're unmuted, if you could state, spell your name for the record, you have three minutes, sir. Good afternoon. My name is Jack Humberg. It's H-U-M-B-U-R-G. I live at 839 13th Avenue North in St. Petersburg. I'm representing the Whispering Pines uh, application. Uh, I wanted the commissioners to understand that we, we uh, that Pinellas Affordable Living is a corporation uh, that is controlled by Boley Centers. This is a supportive housing development, and uh, thank you for your recommendation to staff. Um, and I just registered in order to uh, answer any questions you might have about Whispering Pines. I will say that the uh, prior to the start of this process, we did submit comments about the scoring process. Uh, so a project like ours does not score well because we're small. We don't want to uh, have a large congregation of uh, extremely low income 
of individuals in one place. So this is a 20 unit development serving people at or below 50% of the area median income. And we have received financing from the Florida Housing Finance Corporation. So thank you very much. Thank you, Jack. Uh, Commissioner Gerard. Um, just a question, do we have a scoring category for um, special needs housing? I mean, he makes a good point. No, that's not a scoring cate category currently. Well, maybe it should be. <laughs> maybe they should get points for special.